Right now, in the temple of Karnak, it's huge. And the reason that we've come here is because of Shishak. Mentioned in 2 Chronicles 12, in Egyptian history, he is known as Shishak the First. The Bible makes an audacious claim about Shishak. It says that he took the treasures from the temple of the Lord. And some people say that here in the temple of Karnak, there is the Egyptian record of the campaign that's mentioned in the Bible. Shishak went into Judah and he took the treasures of Solomon and the treasures of the first temple. If we can find that today, another link where the Bible and Egyptian history come together. The Bible tells us that five years after Solomon's death, Pharaoh Shishak invaded Judah. And in an incredible confirmation of scripture, the story of Egypt's invasion of the land can be found on the wall in this temple. Chronicles chapter 12 is one of the most important scriptures when people ask what happened to the Ark of the Covenant and the treasures of the first temple. It says that Pharaoh, king of Egypt, came and had a campaign against Judah. 150 cities are mentioned which Shishon I attacks and he actually took, according to the Bible, the treasures from Solomon's temple, the very first temple that was made to worship the Lord with the greatest artifacts. The Ark of the Covenant was also in there. Now in 2 Chronicles 12, it says he took everything. The Shishonk I, the Pharaoh, as mentioned in the Bible, this is his perspective on the attack. By studying this Egyptian record of the campaign of Shishonk I, Egyptologists have been able to use this data to draw up a possible route which this pharaoh may have taken. Many of the places identified on the wall can still be found today. Yet sadly, many names have been damaged and are now unreadable. Jerusalem is one such city. Yet evidence for this campaign has also been found on an Egyptian monument in Megiddo, Israel. And they went to the first temple, the temple that Solomon had built. Solomon's gone now, his son has come along, and the kingdom is split. But Shishak, the Bible says, from a judgment from God, will come in and they will discover what it's like serving him rather than serving God. God's message to his people was direct. If you refuse to serve the Lord with all your heart, God's protection will be withdrawn and you will become the servants of an oppressive enemy instead. Though this relief is badly damaged, its original intent was to show Pharaoh Shishonk and the god Amun taking captive the enemies of Egypt. The 
strings that are attached to him is the association that leading away captives, the gods are with Shishak. Another proof from Egyptian history of the Bible's account of history. He went into the original temple, took the treasures from the original temple. Some people wonder, did they have the Ark of the Covenant? Because he died quite quickly after this campaign, but his son had huge amounts of gold that gave to the temples and there was a lot of construction. And so people have said that this gold, some of it definitely came from the temple, the very first temple. But it has made some people ask, is the Ark of the Covenant buried in Tanis because it's associated where his sons were buried? We're gonna to go to Tanis and we're gonna see. And it's amazing being here and we're seeing these biblical depictations and stuff which is mentioned in the Bible about these various uh, kings and, and personnel and people groups. Incredible. Really brings it more to um, life. In our last By Faith investigation, we discovered that Egypt recognised the existence of the ancient people of Israel 1200 years before Christ. And Shishonk's record of the invasion of Canaan, combined with the biblical account, shows once again that Egypt and the people of the Bible coexisted in the ancient world of historical fact. 